Hello viewers, I'm Simon Christie and welcome to 4 Drive TV. We've got another great episode balanced with 4 Drive Motorsport, tips, techniques and 4 Drive trips, so hang around for plenty of excitement. Tread lightly, keep it safe, play hard. G'day, I'm Jeff from Ultimate Four Wheel Drive and we're proud to be the naming sponsor of Four Wheel Drive TV here in WA. Uh, Ultimate Four Wheel Drive have been a driving force and getting Four Wheel Drive TV over here. Over the last three or four years now we've taken Simon and Miranda on trips to Pemberton and to the Blackwood River, Coat Road down in the Collie area, up to Mundaring, Wellington Dam and out to Sandy Cape and up to Stockyard Gully up north of Durian. These trips are not only good for the local West Australians, but it's good to show the rest of the country what we've got to offer over here. Our trips range from the really nice touring trips down to Pemberton and to the hardcore trips on Goat Road, right up to the really long touring trips up to Stockyard Gully and Durian and Lehman, Sandy Cape, all within a couple of days out of Perth. All the staff at Ultimate Four Wheel Drive are passionate four wheel drivers, which is a perfect match for four wheel drive TV. And it's awesome when Simon comes over because we all get to go on another great trip. If you're outside of Perth and you're travelling through Perth on your holidays or you're moving to Perth, then just touch base with the guys at Ultimate Four Wheel Drive. You can drop in and see us at the shop or give us a call and we can certainly give you directions on where we've gone in the past and let you know local conditions of the areas that you want to go. I'm Jeff from Ultimate Four Wheel Drive. We've got a beautiful state over here. So everyone come over and have a look at it. Now viewers, I am very excited. I've just received a shipment from Trail Gear in the US with some fantastic, very cool and unique 4x4 accessories, primarily for the 40. Now, as you know, I've been using the 40 at a number of shows, trying to get some time to get it out there wheeling, but we've had a few problems with it. Now here, is what we call a six shooter knuckle from Trail Gear. Typically with the knuckles on the Land Cruisers, in this section here where the kingpin sits on the top and you've also got the steering arms, you have only four studs holding that in. Now when you're running power steering and bigger tires like I am on the 40 and you're trying more extreme obstacles, it puts a massive amount of stress through the knuckle, through the kingpin section there. And what I've done in the 40 is I snapped a bolt stripped a bolt and ripped one completely out of the housing on my last run so upgrading it is absolutely imperative to keep the 40 on the road. Now these six shooter knuckles are absolutely unique. They come from trial gear in the US as I mentioned. They are certainly solid, you can feel the weight in that but being a six shooter it means you've got six studs across here. So you've basically given it a 50% increase in strength, the ability to lock the kingpin down into the bearing but also the steering arm. Now here we have the matching steering arm it's got the kingpin section on the back that will sit into the bearings into the top of the hub but you've got the six studs will come through these cone sections here to lock that down into place and you could run much much bigger tyres here 40 inch plus tyres and this will not fail. So a six shooter knuckle if you're looking for more strength than the Toyotas is an awesome addition to your Land Cruiser. To match the six shooter knuckles you also get a complete set of new studs. Now these studs are absolutely massive compared to the standard Toyota ones. So much thicker, a lot stronger and I don't know if you can see through the package there but they actually come with a flat end top on them so you can actually tighten them down into the housing with a spanner. That's a big problem with the standard Toyota ones. Sometimes you cannot get them far enough into the housing to give you enough grip. With these you can get a spanner onto that and drive them all the way down. So a much stronger setup and much tighter result there on the knuckle and the steering arms.
We've also gone for what we call a long field superset. Now the long field superset is in my opinion, the strongest axle set you can get for a standard Toyota housing. So it means we're replacing the internals, the axles and the CVs throughout that Toyota housing without having to modify or adapt the housing itself. The CVs here are polished chrome ollie and you can just feel the weight and the workmanship in those. They are extremely high quality and as I said, much, much stronger than the standard Toyotas. To match with those CV joints, we've also got the axles. So the axles here are made from 4340 cast chrome ollie. So again, the strongest you can get for a standard differential housing for Toyota. Now this is what I like about the Super Set. It comes with everything you'll need. You're not just purchasing a replacement set of CVs, it's a replacement set of CVs and axles, but even more. When you're fitting stronger CVs and axles, you're pushing the weak link to some other part of the vehicle, and the weak link in this case will be your free wheeling hub. So Trail Gear have also designed and manufactured a strengthened gear set for your free wheeling hub. But if that isn't strong enough and you'd like direct drive, then they're also supplying, and at no extra cost at the moment, these drive flanges. So a set of drive flanges that will bolt onto the hub itself, get rid of the free wheeling hub and give you direct solid lock drive. But it means you won't have the option for free wheeling hubs down the track. Now, I'm absolutely amazed with this kit because it does come with so much more and there's a lot of gear to it. I haven't got time to go through everything, but what I wanted to touch on, it also comes with much stronger axle seals and also much stronger hub seals for the rear of the hub. So a lot of good gear here. It's gonna make a big difference to the 40 and keeping that front edge solid. And realistically, for a factory Toyota housing, this setup here will give me the strongest possible combination for the strongest front end. And that's definitely what I want in the 40. Now I'll be getting Brett at 4x4 Obsession to fit all of these goodies up for me, so you will see feature stories that will fully explain what these do, how they work and how they're installed. I can't wait to get the 40 back out on the tracks with a fully strengthened front end. It'll be awesome. Holden's toughest 4x4 ever has arrived. Introducing the all new Holden Colorado 7. It comes with seven seats as standard and it's loaded with serious off-road grunt. You'll get three ton towing and the awesome 470 Newton meter Duramax diesel engine, plus an impressive weighting depth and hill descent control, all for the hardcore adventurer. The all new Holden Colorado 7 is here. Take it off-road at your Holden dealer today. 30 second kitchen, a kitchen in 30 seconds. Fridge slide first. Fridge slide's got 130 kilo tracks in it, so it's nice and tough. Remove the R clip, don't lose it. Drop the pin, leg locker, kitchen now. Lock kitchen down here, retrieve the R clip, lock on here, R clip in. Leg here, leg here, pull them together. Stove, Billy. How good's that, guys? Couldn't ask for quicker. I'm Chris Weston, off-road racer and owner of Off-Road Rush, and I wouldn't race on anything else than my Mickey Thompson tyres. I trust my Mickey Thompson at high speed. They can handle wet or dry without any trouble. And that means I can keep racing while the competitors stop to change tyres. Mickey Thompson, no wonder they call them legendary. Call 1300 Mickey for your nearest dealer. Definitely one of the things you notice along the way in this area, and I'm sure no matter where you enter from, exit from, wherever you're going through, you go through private property at a lot of stages to get in here. And one of the things you realise is that those farmers are willing to open their gates and are willing to leave those thoroughfares through open to the public. And you start to realise staying on the track, closing gates behind you, not just yeah. ripping over fences or doing anything silly, is going to mean that for our generations to come, kids to come are still going to be able to use those paths because we all know if they get mistreated, if people are going off the tracks and pulling down trees and doing the wrong thing, the only thing that's going to happen is that they're going to have to close it all yeah. and then no longer will people be allowed to get into these sort of areas. There's a level of etiquette, exactly. I think, what you're saying there. And also just even now, you think that it's only when you're in the car driving along 
Mm. You're pulling to a campsite, you've got to be respectful of others, of yeah. course, and also having your fires in the right spot, yep. packing up properly, not yep. leaving rubbish everywhere, yep. because it's the same scenario. If we trash the joint, no one's going to be allowed back in. Yeah. Hey, I'm Neil Price. We're down here at the Four Wheel Drive to Adventure Show in Perth in McCallum Park. We're doing a Moto Trolls demonstration today, showing people what we can do on the bikes. But we've also this year got something a little different. We've got the two Nolan brothers down here, Alex and Lewis, and they're bringing in the freestyle trolls to show you something absolutely amazing that'll blow your mind. Alex and Lewis Nolan are here doing the freestyle moto trolls. They're getting this bike upside down over the fun box and backflipping over the smallest backflip ramp you've ever seen. It's only 500 mil high and they're getting upside down off it. It is absolutely awesome. For a backflip kicker, the current world record is only 900 mil, but Alex and Lewis are going lower again, all the way down to 500 mil. That's almost your head hitting the ground. It is absolutely insane. What people will see here this weekend is unofficially a world record and well and truly a world record. 400 mil smaller. Absolutely awesome. If you need any more information about Moto Trolls, check us out on Facebook, Moto Dynamics, or check out www.motod.com.au. What's the go here, mate? Each year at the Perth Four Wheel Drive and Adventure Show, a small group of keen and extreme four wheel drive enthusiasts gather under the guidance of local 4x4 competitor Sam Chapman to entertain the crowds. Their purpose-built and intricately engineered rigs demonstrate the extreme end of Australian 4x4 motorsport, as well as thrilling visitors with their highly skilled driving abilities and wild antics. Whilst far removed from their tamer street-legal four-wheel drive cousins, these wildly modified four-wheel drives do still see a reasonable amount of use, with the Perth extreme 4x4 scene really starting to grow. More comps are definitely required and some of these lads even drive across the country to compete at world class 4x4 events like Tough Truck. But with this much local passion and interest, the scene is set to continue to grow.
Well, a huge thanks to all of these guys for their efforts in building these tracks and putting on three solid days of spectacular and extreme four-wheel drive displays. It's a great addition to the entertainment at the Perth Four-Wheel Drive and Adventure Show and it's sure to keep the crowds coming back for years to come. Today we're with Jason from Expander Peg. Now Jason, four wheel drivers love camping and they're after anything that can make camping easier. When it comes to tent pegs, what do they need to know about tent pegs? There's a whole raft of different things. It depends on the environment and scenario you're actually using the peg in, the size of the actual canvas awning or, or tent that you're actually trying to pin down as to what you would actually require. There's a whole raft of different things. So we've actually developed a peg that will actually do the broadest range of functions out of any peg that's out there at the moment. Now, interesting you say develop because there hasn't been much development in tent pegs in the last 50, 60 or even longer years. A tent peg is one of the oldest implements around in the world and basically what we've developed is something that's completely unique and it's extremely functional. They really haven't changed, all they've done is basically made them bigger and bigger to actually get more surface area for more friction. However, we've used a completely different concept to actually develop what we actually have here today. It's a dual prong design that's elastically deformable with a resilient bias. So quite simply you squeeze it together, stick it in the ground and because it's trying to actually spread itself apart it anchors itself in the ground. Because it has two legs it actually won't rotate or pivot in the ground. It has a far greater amount of holding force than conventional peg because it's basically an elastic type of steel. It's a self tensioner and basically takes the shock load out of your guy ropes or any cables as well. So instead of having an inline spring the peg will actually do that as well. It has two prongs, it guides itself into the ground and it comes out fairly easy as well as long as you pull it out the way it went into the ground. But like any peg, it basically put it into the ground, anchor off it at 90 degrees and then once you finish with it, either hook another peg into it or the claw of a hammer and pull it back out again. But very, very simple to use. We make them in three different sizes, a 25 centimetre length, a 30 centimetre length and 35. 35 in particular for softer substrates such as sand or, or river silt. The shorter ones for your very hard sort of surfaces where you don't need a lot of depth penetration but need strength in a peg. And there's a mid-sized peg for a good all-round size. And what sort of manufacturing goes into a quality peg like this one? We've gone through 63 different grades of steel to actually come up with what we actually have today and it's taken me a long time to refine it to the process in now. So it's a very specific grade of spring steel and we actually do a lot to the actual the steel itself as well to actually harden it up and actually get it as robust as it is. Now who would benefit from the expander peg? Anyone that basically wants to have a very, very diverse and versatile all-round peg. Now if people need more information about the innovative expander peg, where can they get that from please Jason? www.expanderpegs.com Also through Facebook, if you search Facebook slash expander pegs, we're there. The next generation of shock absorbers is here. Leading the way in 4x4 suspension development, Old Man Emu introduces the most advanced and finely tuned shock absorber on the market. Nitro Charger Sport incorporates a new valving system that instantly adapts to all terrain for an outstanding smooth ride and phenomenal control. Backed by a three year 60,000 kilometer warranty, you can trust Nitro Charger Sport, built in Australia for Australian conditions. With nearly 100 years experience in designing and manufacturing heavy duty filtration, Donaldson is one of the most trusted brands in the market and our filters meet or exceed OEM specification. Originally developed for four wheel drives on mine sites, Donaldson's range of four wheel drive filters will perform in even the toughest environment, giving you peace of mind that you are buying the best and the most reliable filter for your vehicle and backed by a full manufacturer's warranty. Donaldson, tough filters for tough environments. When you need your manual gearbox rebuilt, don't start in reverse. Get it geared up right the first time with the team from 360 Gearboxes. As Australia's premium gearbox and diff specialist, 360 use the world's best gears, shafts, bearings and seals. 360 offer a guaranteed and quality changeover and A1 customer service. If your manual is grinding, crunching, sticking or blowing, demand the best 360 Gearboxes, a fast, reliable and high quality rebuild. For more info, visit 360gearboxesdiffs.com.au.
G'day, my name's Stuart, and this is my 2006 Nissan Navarre. We've done a fair bit of work to it. We've lifted it, put an exhaust through it, three inch. We've chipped it, we've had it dynoed, and put a bull bar, winch bar on it with the winch. Fitted the snorkel myself, also put a dual battery kit in it. And just running a little set of Mudzillas at the moment, just for the tough stuff when we go away. Otherwise, we usually run a set of all trains. Most of our trips, we go away. We like to go away the high country mostly, so done a, a lot up through King River and around there. We also do a fair bit of camping up around the back of Hillsville and Arbuthnong. It's a bit of fun, sort of tracks and good hard stuff we can find in around there and have a bit of fun. Next trip, we'd probably like to go out further east and go out towards Amio Way, explore that side of the high country. We haven't really gone too far out there. A few things we'd probably like to add to it, let alone just a roof rack for starters to fit a bit more of the kids stuff in and probably diff locks front and rear just to help deal with some articulation issues we have with the independent front end. Details on how to win a place in the Your Rig weekly competition can be found on the Full Drive TV Facebook page. And each successful entrant wins an electric blue span set snatch strap, a Nava outer circuit double fuse holder, a Nava power cup and a Nava cigarette lighter extension lead. An Oricom handheld UHF kit including two 2 watt UHFs, a Mean Mother mug, a Mean Mother snatch strap bag, a Mean Mother umbrella and a Mean Mother stubby holder. A pair of smart scissors and an Emmy Sharp knife sharpener from our good friends at Keesler. An add-on Donaldson diesel fuel filter kit including chassis mount. A U-Fixit windscreen repair kit. A Superior Engineering cap and stubby holder. A Berrimer diesel cap an ARB Penrith stubby holder, a litre of emergency gear oil from 360 gearboxes, a cap from 360 gearboxes, a copy of 4x4 Australia magazine, a copy of Dirt Comp magazine and a Dirt Comp calendar, a copy of Wild Deer and Hunting Adventures magazine, a copy of Blitz Martial Arts magazine, two four-wheel drive TV medium stickers to add to your rig, two stubbies of Bundaberg ginger beer, an ARB air locker t-shirt, an ARB jacket, an ARB pair of socks, an ARB cap, and an ARB old man emu jacket. And it's all neatly wrapped up in an ARB cargo gear carry bag. I'd like to thank Simon Miranda and all the sponsors for all the great prizes. It's been a crack of day out here and beautiful weather for it. Today we're facing some rocky conditions, but we've also got a little bit of light rain. Now with any four wheel drive trip, it's important that you do let your tyres down. It improves the comfort for the occupants of the vehicle, but more importantly, it greatly enhances traction. Now with the rocks we're facing today, we had a look at them last night. There's some great stuff out there. I reckon 18 PSI will be the way to go. How about this rain? But the full driving is awesome. Check out these rocks. Let's bring the convoy through. The Holden made it through, the Ford stuck!
Hi, I'm Travis. This is Matt, my Navi, and we're Pro Dozer Racing. This is my 2007 GU Mr. Patrol Cab chassis that we've had for nearly a month. We've put a tray on it, our high mount, and we're building it up. This weekend at Heathcote at Reedy's Mania, we've done all right so far, but the factory Nissan bars let us down a fair bit with the approach angles, and we're still just running 35s at the moment till we perform a guard shop. We're pretty happy with the three litre at this stage. Very reliable. We've got a, a few things we'd like to do to it in the future to get it up to where we want it, and we can get in there and have a real good crack at it then. We're going to be running a, a red winch later this year. We'll just build a new bar for it, and the red winch will go in. Got one of those off Joe Voles here in Bendigo. Yeah, so I'd urge anyone that wants to come out and have a go that Clint caters for a wide variety of vehicles. You don't have to have everything, just come and give it a go. I guess I'd like to thank Clint Reed from Reedy's, all the sponsors that sponsored the event, Matt Pro Diesel for the help that he's given me putting the vehicle together. Joe Bowles from Red Winch. Look forward to seeing you all next time. Well, viewers, thank you for tuning in. Now, please remember, jump onto fourwheeldrivetv.com.au and check out the series prizes. You've got to send me an email to be in the running. I'm Simon Christie. Tread lightly, keep it safe, play hard, make sure you're watching Four Wheel Drive TV next week.